Don't get it. You can. Yeah, we won't get it. Hello, friends. I hope you're having a good day today. We're so excited that you've joined us again for another exciting Bible study, God's Word of Life. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but we're making some changes. We're trying to freshen up a little bit. We're trying to look a little bit better. <laughs> we just seemed like when we had these ladies that the numbers go up. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, but especially with tonight's topic, seriously, uh, we're talking about marriage. We're talking about why I do. And, uh, you know, I, I think we all know, guys, that when it comes to these kind of things, it's very always wise to get mom's input because they got, Definitely. I think, I told them, I yeah. said, I really think that you can bring more to the table here than I can tonight. I really believe that. Uh, and it's going to be a blessing for you because they're, they're, they're right now because the enemy is at war with God's people and he's sure. doing everything he can to destroy them. And he has got a bullseye on marriages mm -hmm. right now. There's more people getting divorced than getting married. The fifty over the fifty percent of the people that get married get divorced. Now think about wow. that. Wow. We know that is not God's will. And we're gonna dig in that tonight and we're gonna see what the scripture has to say and we're gonna also just share some personal uh stories about this also. So um Cindy, won't you get us started with any housekeeping so we can jump into this really good study? Uh don't have a lot of housekeeping details, but tonight we will be using a different phone number if you have a prayer request or even a comment that you can't get, you know, Ron's attention or <laughs> whatever, but you can text your prayer requests or comments to 870-510-8048. And we just want to remind you to um, let us know what's going on, if you have some thoughts. And um, really, that's about it um, for tonight. Okay. If you're um, on Facebook, you know, you can tag people. You can share the post. I know watch parties are, I think, going away. I don't know what's going on with that. But get it out there and share it with your friends. Yeah. And, and, we, and, and uh, the number again for texting, prayer requests, comments, 870-510-8048. Yeah. You know, and this topic tonight personal experiences uh, is going to be more helpful than anything else. Uh, maybe something that you've been through. So please help us out with this. You're sharing uh, your comment or thought uh, maybe would help somebody else and give them hope and even Amen. save their marriage. So we really want your help and participation in this tonight. Amen. Joy, can we have a prayer before we get started? Yes, yes. Okay. I just want to say to get started that I don't think there's any relationships that have not had some kind of rocky road in Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So it, hope is needed for everyone in any stage of their marriage or their relationships. And so it's so important for us to dig into this Amen. word to find out what does that road look like yeah. and what can it look like. So I hope tonight mm -hmm is filled with hope and inspiring for everyone. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Joy. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for an opportunity to come and to dig into your word and to really see, not from our human standpoint, but you see from the heavens what we cannot see from the earth, which tells us that you know what comes before us and that we can trust you. We can learn to stop what we're doing and ask for your wisdom that you might lead and guide us. May your word be a guiding light to us tonight. May we share it, and may we share inspiring hope, Father, that you have changed and transformed us, even in our own relationships, mm -hmm. that you can change and transform any relationship. Yes. We thank you, Father, that you have already built the bridge, and you so desire to have this relationship with us. May we hear your voice tonight. May it be clear. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Okay. Awesome. Wow. Why I do? Why? I mean, why marriage? Why marriage even in uh, to begin with? Why should... Because right now it's getting pretty common. You know, people say, why get married? They just live together? Or, or There's really not even a definition of what mm. marriage is out there. Mm. So why I do? That's Joy. a question. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Well, uh, I tell you, I, I do. We've all said you know, it. So. Yeah, we have. We have, you know, and I think for me, the why I do is yeah. it's about a commitment. Um, and when I, um, this past um, Sabbath, we were at church and there was a couple that was married 68 years. Yes. I heard about that. 68 yeah. years. That's that's like Leon almost, and Marian. I mean, I don't want to say anything to us, but my, it's like my mom's age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you think that's, wow. You know, first of all, time is relative, right? But 68 years is a long yeah, time. And I think about 
what kind of growth that they've seen, what kind yeah. of support. And when you have that support of your spouse yeah. and it's that long, there's so many other things that you can go out and do and achieve and serve and Absolutely. you fill your purpose more fully when we are Have together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We complete we're, each other. We complete. Yes. Yeah. It's like we're made in his image together. Yeah. We're made in the image yeah. together. And so when we are, it point. allows us to serve more fully in yeah. our purpose. Yeah. And and when we serve in our purpose, how many more people are served? How much how much more fulfilled are we? Our That's families right. are made whole. Yeah. They're more successful in life and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it's it's worth the relationship. The marriage is worth it. Yeah. Whatever even with the ups the and the struggles downs. are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they are worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so why did you say I do? <laughs> That's a story for another. Because she was head over heels, madly in love. <laughs> you know, we we are created for relationships, yeah. and and we are com um, created for companionship. I mean, we can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden with you know Adam and Eve and see that. Yeah. But um, I, I, you took many of the words out of my mouth, but 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 truthfully, um, it's just it, it. We can give God more glory when we we glorify him with our marriage, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. not taking away from those who choose to remain single and, mm -hmm. and all that, that's totally fine. But there are many blessings that come, yeah. um, with a well, commitment. Let me paint a picture in scripture here for us. Uh, why I do marriage was God's idea. Absolutely. The, this God's way is always the best way. And that's what you, you were saying, Joy. It is Absolutely. always the best way. But we get a picture here in Genesis, back in the, it, the creation here. Genesis chapter 1, God created, you know, all these things. I mean, He created, what really blows my mind here, is He created these things out of nothing. Mm. It was just His, his imagination, wow. His yeah. creativity, yeah. His artistic ability and, 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 and you boom with the word, with his word, and you've got the blue skies and you've got these beautiful birds and, and you've got these lofty trees and all this beauty all around us. And everything, every time that God would create something, he would say, and it was good. And it was good. It was good. He it said, this is good. good. It was very good. <laughs> and on and on. And I agree. We agree with that. God, the beauty is breathtaking in God's creation. But then you get after six days of doing this, God kneels, he kneels down and he does mm -hmm. something different, you know, rather than just, you know, than just speaking that he kneels down in, in, uh, in Genesis chapter two, verse seven says, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the yeah. ground and he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life and man became a living being. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you know that, that God had to have a sense of joy and, and excitement and about giving birth to, to the first man in his mm -hmm. own image. Yeah. And, but, but something, but this is the shocking part I want to bring up here, but God said something different than he had said all along the rest of the creation. Have y'all noticed that? It, it, for the first time in, in all of creation, in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it said this right here. It says, And the Lord God said, mm. It is not, not good, good. <laughs> not good that man should be alone, but yeah. he needs a helper comparable to him. So here, you know why I do? God is saying, this is part of my plan. Mm. You might not understand this, but but it's you're not complete with, with, uh, without each other. You wow. need each other. And so that's a, a beautiful picture that, that God gives us here. He knows what we need before we even know what we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Know. And I love this note that was just sent in. Thanks, Bert. And it's, yeah. it just is a reminder that marriage fulfills our, fills our God-given need to belong. Mm -hmm. And when we look right here about yeah. Adam, it's not for good for him to be alone. That means there's supposed to be somebody else. That's right. It means we belong. Mm -hmm. We belong. Like that. And there's yeah. a place for yeah. us. Uh, Jesus. I, I got one for you. Go ahead. Um, what about Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine? It says, two are better than one." That's right. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's and, pretty and you, simple. Yeah. You can go and read there through verse twelve. Go ahead and read verse through verse twelve. Um, actually, I don't have that one. I'm I do. Reading they, from, they, my, they, from my phone. I mean, this is I'm Ecclesiastes spot, chapter four, verse nine through twelve. Oh, Listen to this. Yeah, okay. This is supposed to be the wise guy, you know, uh, in a good way. <laughs> good way, ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a good way. <laughs> 
two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Yep. For mm-hmm. if they fall, one will lift up his companion. Mm-hmm. But like woe that. to him who is alone uh, when, he, when he falls, for if he has no one to help him get up. Mm-hmm. Again, if two lie down together, mm-hmm. they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him? And a three a threefold mm. cord is not, not quickly broken. broken. And so the, these are all scriptures from the Bible. Yeah, God telling it. us that it this is a good thing. I'm the one that thought of marriage, mm-hmm. and and um, uh, we were talking earlier when we were kind of getting ready. If God is, if God, if this is God's idea, and it is because the Bible right. says so, and and we we know we know. Uh, just we just know that it's better to two is better than one. Mm-hmm. It is better because you, just dealing with Absolutely. life, you know the struggles of life, the ups and downs of life. You know it's it's so good to have each other there. Just um, to bounce things off yeah. of each other. You know if you're by yourself, you, it's a lot of pressure to make a decision. Mm-hmm. But as a as a husband and wife, you can you can reason things out. You can talk about it, and and you feel more secure about yeah. decisions. It's it's just it's just it's just it's just better. So if God, if mm-hmm. this is God's ideal, and we know it's better, this is the best part here. If God, if God's the one that started this, He's also mm-hmm. going to keep it going. Mm-hmm. He's yes. going. He will fight point. for your marriage. Yeah. And that's I think uh, we 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 talked about this when we were getting started. We know that there's families out there right now that really need what we're going to be able to share here tonight because Satan is trying to destroy your marriage. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure Joy and Michael Mm -hmm. have had their share of struggles. Uh, Cindy and I have had our share of struggles, but we want you to know, friends, that God will fight for your marriage. He he would do that. Uh, This is his ideal. Uh, Let let me share what Jesus says here in Mark chapter 10, verse... 6 through 9. Mark chapter 10, verse 6 through 9. If one of you'd like to read, can that, read that, you can. Okay. Mark okay. chapter. This, and just in case anybody's thinking, oh, that's just Old Testament. We don't have to do right. that now. Uh, this is what Jesus says. Okay. Uh, so we're in Mark chapter 10, mm-hmm. verse 6 through 9. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female Mm -hmm. for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh so then they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore god has joined together let no man put asunder okay Mm. wow that's pretty deep there maybe another translation so can we all agree that that god's plan really is the best way most it, it really is the best way. Um, it, I want you to think about this. Marriages, our marriages, forms the, the, the very basic foundations of society. Mm. If, you know, from the beginning, this mm. was God's plan. And so, you know, we know that, that, that uh, back in Deuteronomy, uh, God instructed the people, you know, put this on the doorpost of your house here. Yep. Talk about me. You know, tell the children about me. Let them know I love them. Let them know it's best to follow me and, and so on. And, and everything like this. So if we have families, and let's just think about this. If we have families and enjoy, you know, I, your your children are very well-mannered children. I mean, they really, really are. And I'm not just saying that. I wouldn't be saying this because God's my witness. They really are very well-mannered children. And uh, and they they it's because they lived, they lived and grew up in a home that was taught good Absolutely. values. You know how to have respect for elders, and and how to treat others politely, and how to treat others, and not be selfish, and so on. These are all values that come that 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 we have in a good Christian home. It's been said, you know, of our children all, and our children too. I want to brag on them. They're all uh, they're grown up now, mm-hmm. but they're very well mannered. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Good, yes. hardworking people. The, the, this is the very foundation of society. Uh, I've heard it said that as as the family goes, so does the society. Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. so can you relate to what I'm talking yeah. about? I know this is about marriage and relationships, but I do have to brag on Elijah really quick, though. Uh-huh. While we're talking about this, because you were gone out of town one weekend, and your husband and, and Lily and Elijah was there, and we were having just a little uh, quick little meal afterwards before a meeting, and no one was up at the at the dessert table. Kind of surprised, but you know, I'm walking up there, and here comes Elijah walking toward the dessert table, and I said, Elijah. Which one of these desserts is the best? And he goes, well, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I 
would choose, and he was so grown up, and he's, how old is Elijah? Ten. 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 He says, I would choose the lemon bars. And I oh. went, okay, <laughs> I love lemon bars. And I, I mean, it's just me and him having an adult conversation about lemon bars, and he says, I made those. And I'm like, <laughs> what? He says, I made them. And then Lily tells me he gets on YouTube and does it all by himself, looks it up and does it. So you've done really well with, with these kids. So I was very mm -hmm. impressed. Wow. Praise the Lord. Right. Praise the Lord. And, I and they were very good, too. <laughs> they are good. He is. He, he is a good cook. <laughs> he gets it from his dad. He's a good sure. cook already. Well, that's like a baker, I guess. More yeah. of a baker. Well, but that's something he gets from his dad. He will make sure. some future mate very happy with yeah. that skill. <laughs> so, yeah. so in, in, in you know, yes, it's good for children. Children, when they're when they're born, by their very nature, they uh, are selfish. Can we go ahead and say that? Yes. Selfishness is is really the the opposite the opposite of of what God is like. God is love, and so it's almost like this is a a marriage is a place to to get trained to be more like God mm -hmm. in a way. So if you want to look at it that way, uh, uh, it's even good for mom and dads because. Even as adults, when they get married, you know, and everything, we we tend to have our selfish natures. But yes, as we learn to, to live with each other, and I had to learn to, to not only think of myself, but I need to put my wife first. And and, and that is, and she helps me do that. And and uh, and it's been really good for me. It's been really good for me. So I think, I think it's a joint effort. You know, so it is a joint effort, and I think for for us in our my relationship with my husband, it becomes really easy after time seeing the same person there beside you, where you might not take the time to respect them, huh. or might not take the time to be with them, or be present, or wake up and allow yourself to have a good attitude rather than, ah, oh, today it's too early. I shouldn't be out of bed. And the, the husband has to hear all the negatives that oh, yeah. come out of your, yep. you know, just, just come from your head and you just start, you know, bringing them out. It's going to start, start the day on the wrong side of the bed, so to speak. It yeah. makes mm -hmm. it difficult. And a lot of times with our husbands, that's the first thing that we do. We just start telling them, this is how I feel about everything. Rather than just saying, wait a minute, what is what what is really going to be helpful here? Right. And taking the time to say, what, what should we be talking about? Mm. What is going to be helpful? And I think that's where this covenant, you know, when we come with Christ, when we're building this, this covenant with God, this relationship with God, we come to him with the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. We come yeah. with res amount of respect. We come with, uh, um, like very attentive, very engaged in mm -hmm. the relationship. So how are we showing up in our relationship, our marriage? Mm. That's how we're going to show up in our relationship with God. Yeah. And That's a good point. We're either going to grow from it or we're going to stay stagnant. Okay. And when we don't commit to that relationship, you're like a teetotaler. Mm -hmm. you, you can't really get <laughs> like all that. the benefits of, <laughs> yeah. of the relationship right. unless you commit. That's right. Because you can't. You can't be halfway in, halfway out. You have to be fully committed. And That's when right. you are, well, let's just look at when... when when the Israelites were fully committed and they stepped into the water, that's when the water parted. That's when it parted. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And when we commit to a relationship, Amen. to an earthly relationship, then there's benefits that come with it. Absolutely. And we're told, Scripture tells us, and I was trying to find it because we did this in our Sabbath school last week, and we talked about the, the blessings that God blessed on the marriage. Mm -hmm. He blessed the individuals. He blessed the relationship, and then he blessed mm. where they were to go for. Oh. So three tangible blessings, and we read about the blessings right there. You guys Absolutely. read it in Ecclesiastes. Very practical. Mm -hmm. This is not like right. pie in the sky. This is, this is very practical. Yeah. Two Absolutely. people are going to be warmer. You're going to mm -hmm. be able to lift yep. more, yes. do more. Many yep. hands make light That's work, right? right? Yep. And so it's, it's just very practical. So how are we showing up? Are we showing up committed to the relationship? Mm. You mm -hmm. know, that's the same with God. We know that he wants good for us yes yeah. right we can trust scripture when it tells us that it's been tested over and over and yes. over again yeah. it's been tested Absolutely. and we should continue to be attentive to see is he faithful to his word right mm -hmm. but are we showing up and that commitment will show us that and i think you know i have a bunch to a, a bunch to look at when you look at just just the old testament in itself we look at the word covenant Right, because the covenant is that commitment, that relationship, and it's talked about 287 wow. times alone yeah. in the Old Testament. That's wow. a lot of conversation about what this commitment looks like, mm -hmm. what this covenant looks like. And it's, I love that you brought up what ha is happening in the New Testament as well, because it does 
translate. I kind of focus. Now I'm just starting to get excited here. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and do that, Joy. Because what like I hear you, excitement. what I hear you saying here, is, <laughs> is that is that yes, marriage is good, but God's got an even deeper purpose mm-hmm. for marriage. It's more to train us and and, and show yeah. us how He wants us to have a relationship with Him. Right. And we all throughout the Bible, mm. you see this marriage relationship being referred old testament and new testament over and over new covenant old covenant is still it's still it's brought up over and over in the in the bible uh about about marriage and relationship and and we see christ christ is like is uh the church we are the bride of christ Mm, and we see what jesus did for us we see how he how he gave we see the grace that he extended toward us the love that he's extended toward us and he wants us to have that same type of grace uh long suffering uh mercy uh, toward each other that he's had toward the church and when you do Mm -hmm. that it's a win-win for everybody absolutely yeah Mm -hmm. And, and it's a nurturing thing, too, just like you were saying about our relationship with God. But things that are important to us, things that we care about, we're going to pay, we, we should pay really close attention to them mm-hmm. and nurture them. Because anything that's nurtured, cared for, loved, mm-hmm. it will grow, it will blossom and bloom. And that is, I parallel that to our relationship with Christ. Well, mm-hmm. we, we've, got, we've got personal testimonies we want to share yeah. here do you have something you I want do. To share? I, yeah. I want to share um, one of our um, viewers, Cynthia. Um, she has shared a really beautiful um, story. If any of you know Cynthia and Shelby, and Shelby Shelby has her, been on here before. Um, this is really good. She says, "We are so thankful that God restored our marriage over 20 years ago and has given us a firm foundation okay. built on the rock." And we know who that rock is. Jesus. Mm -hmm. We hung on to Jesus even when we didn't want to hang on to each other. And I love that. God was fighting for you, (laughs) Cynthia and Shelby. Uh, And as we drew closer to him, we we drew closer to each other, she says. And we know that Mm -hmm. all of us know that to be Mm -hmm. true. He is faithful and there is nothing he cannot heal. Mm. We are so thankful. And we're thankful for yes. you and Shelby. That's right. Yes, yes. Praise I just, God. To I, I want to echo what Cynthia, thank you so much, Cynthia. And I love that um, I have been able to be a part of that journey with mm. you guys. Just a little bit that you have allowed other people to be inspired by your journey. And I'll have to echo that. When Michael and I were first married, we were separated for, it seemed like eternity. But it was it was a very difficult time. And I know I was ready to just close the book and walk away, but Michael was not. Mm -hmm. And he really dug in Mm -hmm. and really um, hung on tight to the Lord and to his church family. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. Mm -hmm. And we got back together. When we got back together, we had moved out here to Arkansas. When we went back to that church family, I can just remember saying, Thank you. Amen. All I could do was just thank you, yeah. and my heart just yeah. yes. just just welled up with such gratitude yeah. for everyone in that church that prayed for us. Mm-hmm. Yes, over and over again because now I understand what it means when you covet the prayers, <laughs> yeah. right? Because yeah. I know it was the the prayers and the church Amen. that held him close to the Lord mm-hmm. that prayed prayed us back together, yeah. united oh, yeah. us, yeah. and that was was huge. So, Cynthia, I, I can completely testify. Thank you. Well, I have to say, there's another little add-on here. I just now saw it. She says, and he wants the world to see a healthy marriage yeah. mm-hmm. to show his love for us and his love for the church. He wants us to be that Amen. example yeah. to each other and to the world because yeah. there's a whole world watching. Y'all got me excited Oop. here because <laughs> this is so good. This is things that everybody can use. You made a comment a while ago, Joy. You said that even when you didn't feel like it, mm-hmm. even it, you know, it's just like that, but, but you went for it anyway. Uh, God gives us instruction in the Bible on how we should treat each other and how, and, and, you know, and love each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to read Ephesians 5, 25 through 33. Uh, Ephesians 5, 25, or Joy, you can read that if you'd like. Ephesians 5, 25 through 33. And this is, this is, in other words, this is God's idea. And, and if you're willing, even when you don't feel like it, mm-hmm. if you're willing to, to say, okay, God, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to trust you. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to follow your leading here. I'm going to, I'm going to love Michael when, when I don't want to love him. I'm going to, I'm going to forgive Michael when, when I don't feel like forgiving him. 
but God, but I'm going to do it through Jesus' strength. Because like mm. we said, if you're willing to do this, God will fight for you. He will yes. give you the power yeah. to do this. So please read that. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church, and he gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the water, washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Up to what verse? Okay, uh, through 33, keep going. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. One flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, mm. and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Okay. Mm. All right. That's good. Here, here it is then. This, God is saying the relationship that you have with your wife is like Jesus' relationship with the church. Mm. What does that tell us? Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, his plan is perfect. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I... he's going to empower us. Yes. If, if, if behind every commandment is kind of like the, the oak tree is in the acorn right. behind every commandment. Husbands, love your wives. Yep. Not be selfish. Right. Not put her first. Mm -hmm. If you do that, God is going to help you. We have he's to gonna see help with it. his eyes. We have yep. to, because when we look with our own eyes, we are all of that, you know, we just, we just kind of decide that it's one way or the other but when we we look through the lens of jesus through mm. the eyes of faith and and we look at what he's written here for us it does give us a different picture yeah. you know it adjusts that picture a lot because you know i go back to the feelings um mm. you know wow how many times have we not done something or did something based just strictly off our feelings mm -hmm. not rather off a a decision mm -hmm. based you know and, and when we look at God's Word and His plan for marriage, I have to say I'm going to make a conscious decision that I want to make things work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't feel like getting up and going to work early in the morning. But if bills are going to get paid, we do it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so there has to be a level. Yes, there's, a, there's an emotion in love, and that should be there. Clearly. Yes, what a blessing. But, but definitely uh, we want to... We want to make. We want to follow through with the example he's given us. Let me share uh, this little testimony of what happened in our life personally, because because of this. Now it says, "Husband, love your wives." It's almost like the husband was supposed <laughs> to take the initiative here. That was not the case in mm. in, in our relationship. And Cindy, when when we first got got together, you know, we come together, but we did not bring God. I didn't. We came anyway. together, but we didn't we, come we together. Didn't, we didn't come together with God, uh, and, yeah, and um, I was basically living out in the world. But and and so there th was friction, 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 uh, and 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 Cindy was right in there with the friction with me. But she made a choice. She made a choice, uh, and God put it on her heart to to start praying for me instead of just walking away, because that's what a lot of people are doing. They, 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 you, you talked about building a bridge a while ago and how, yeah. how the bridge separates. Well, we, we had, we had, a, we had this big void. We didn't try to, we, the bridge got tore down and we were mm. trying, we were not trying to build we it. We weren't trying it. to repair you the bridge. We were not trying to repair either. it. Didn't know how mm. to, didn't know that Jesus was the bridge. And, uh, and so I was, I didn't really know the Lord, but, but what happened is she started praying for me and she started unconditionally loving me when I didn't deserve it, when she offered not, me forgiveness. Not on my own though, I did. But not on her own Only, because she was seeking yes. God. When she connected with the bridge mm. builder, Jesus. Yeah, that's yeah. it. When she, when she connected to Jesus, I seen something happen in her I'd never witnessed in my whole life. We fought all the time. We fought like cats and dogs. Mm. It was it, the first seven years of our marriage. Mm. Th this it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough, I and mean, we 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 didn't we got to where we didn't even like each other. <laughs> but 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 God put it on our heart to do something mm. about it. 
about yeah. her, and she started praying and fasting and seeking God and, and His help with all her heart. Mm. And, and something changed in her. Amen. Her countenance changed. The way she treated me changed. The way she responded was I, I was the same person, mm-hmm. but she changed. She started Praise loving me unconditionally. She started giving herself. She started following these instructions right here in Ephesians 5.25 yeah. that the bridge builder gives. The circumstances and, weren't necessarily changing at all. Yeah. And, and certainly my feelings could have just went, you know, but there was a huge obvious change. So I thought I should, with the bridge story, I wanted to kind of share what the bridge story is. And that is Michael and I were at dinner last night. We were talking about what would our cardboard testimony be? Mm-hmm. And a cardboard testimony is where on one side you talk about about maybe it said separated or headed for divorce and then the other side of the cardboard it said restored renewed reunited yes and we talked about what would ours be because there's been so many things um i was raised with daily worship in the home and i wanted daily worship in the home and i wanted michael to lead it out that's what my dad had done that's what i wanted him to do he was supposed to do that's what he was supposed to do i had this expectation and that wasn't he wasn't signing up for that. He wasn't signing up for my agenda. And, um, and, Michael. And I, I, in the beginning, I had to make the commitment that, first of all, I can't show up at, to worship angry and frustrated because mm-hmm. my husband doesn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I need to leave that there and show up and be present and have worship with my children. And now here we are how many years later and by golly, a night mm-hmm. doesn't go by that he's not calling the children in. I don't care what time it is. We're having prayer. We're having worship. Praise before God. We go to bed. And, you know, it was it, it, a complete shift for both of us. We both had to change our hearts. And one of the things we talked about was a bridge. And there's a story I heard not just recently of a, of a city where the bridge had broken in the city. And without the bridge, there was no commerce. There was no action. Mm-hmm. There was no activity. Mm-hmm. So, and the bridge broke almost immediately so they talked about how long it would take and talked to the contractors and they said it would take nine months well the city knew Mm -hmm. how much money that was going to cost them in commerce because each day they were losing they said if you finish it early we'll pay you ten thousand dollars a day to finish it early well of course the contractors got it done in eight months but for the city it was worth it and so as michael and i were talking about us building that bridge Mm -hmm. that it's more important that we build that bridge because there's exponential growth within the family unit when mom and dad are on the same page our children are happier they know the expectations. They know the boundaries. They know where they can do, what That's they right. can't do. They're happier. We're not bickering. It's not about us bickering. It's about a family unit. So it's exponential growth for the entire family. But then we got to talking, but it's different with God. Mm-hmm. Our relationship with God is totally mm-hmm. different. Where we're building the bridge here, we're asking God to work through us to build the bridge because mm-hmm. we can't do it. No. Right. But with God... The bridge is already there. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like I that. can do to build the bridge. God already has the bridge fully there. Now, mm-hmm. I have a choice. I can walk up to the bridge and walk away mm-hmm. and never use the bridge, right. but there will be no growth. Yes. Mm-hmm. When I walk up to the bridge, cross the bridge, mm-hmm. and trust Him that the bridge is going to be there. It's right. firm. It's stable. I like that. It's complete growth it's exponential growth Mm -hmm. for each individual and then us as a unit with christ as that bridge because he is and it tells us in galatians 3 i know i I got excited again sure go ahead (laughs) Galatians three. you know there's a limit of getting excited on the wednesday and i got a question for you (laughs) and cindy that i want after you read that so this says christ and this is talking about in the old testament we talked about that covenant with abraham and now here christ is has fulfilled is fulfilled that he is the covenant and it Mm -hmm. says christ has redeemed us Mm -hmm. from the curse of the law Mm -hmm. which would be us building that bridge right people doing it having become Come a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, because mm-hmm. of our faith, that we trust yeah. that that bridge is there. Mm-hmm. All the promises, all that covenant yep. that was promised to Abraham and and to the Israelites is mm. is good for us today. Okay. It's today, I it's love good that. for us today. I love that joy. And so, here's my question for both of y'all, because I, there's there's people out there right now that's watching, 
and that's going to watch in the future because this is recorded. It's going to be uh, put out there on the internet. Uh, there's families out there that, that do not have a bridge. All they got is a wall. Mm -hmm. There's a wall between the husband and wife right mm -hmm. now. But you're telling me, what I understand you're telling me is that if you're willing to follow God's way here, God's way, to put the other first, to love them, you know, like you, they, you want to be loved, that there's blessings that come. Yes. How can they tear down that wall and build a bridge mm. and well, use your personal testimony say, or, yes. or share a scripture? <laughs> How can they tear that wall down? Because they need that wall tore down. They're desperate. Yep. They're, they're, they need hope right now. I mean, I can say just in the beginning, you know, just with that, something simple as, it seems like simple as worship. It seems yeah. simple. Right. But I can tell you, I was really bitter that he was not doing his job. Yeah. I was bitter. And uh -huh. when you get, when I'm Michael? bitter, yeah, you know, you know, you know that feeling. But uh, you're a good one. <laughs> but when that, when that is there, when that feeling is there, that is a wall. A that wall. bitterness is a That's wall. Right. And it, and I, I always, you know, talk mm -hmm. to my, my family and my children. It's first, it's a thought and the enemy mm -hmm. just plants that thought like, see, He's never going to be the man he's supposed to be, right? Just yep. negative yeah. thoughts, and they're just right. M Michael calls the them wall thought gets bigger darts. and bigger. You it just it gets maybe thicker, and if you voice that in I, any I think way, yes. that's even worse. Or you dwell know. on it, yes. then it goes from the head right. to the heart. Yep. Yep. So yep. now my heart is hard, yep. and and it is you know now it's rock solid, okay. and then my actions start to be. Your dad won't come to worship. Well, yeah. how is that yeah. if I'm going to show up to my children and start? Now you project it yeah. onto yes. your family. Now mm -hmm. I've destroyed our, you know, to my children. I'm talking negative mm -hmm. about their daddy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. What is that going to do to I'm their sure image of their dad? People could relate to what you're talking about. Here. Yes. I mean, because mm -hmm. I mean, it, and it happens. And, and there, it could be. You should be doing the dishes when I think you should do the dishes. Right. You should mow the yard. Whatever yep. it is, it, it still bigger, falls bigger. the same way. It goes from these negative yep. thoughts to the heart to the yep. to you know bitter thought goes to the heart, yep. hardens, mm -hmm. and then it gets sent out to the world. And that's where it's really important to you know back up. Where is this happening? Where mm -hmm. are my actions happening? Because eventually I got to a point where I'm showing up to worship, and how I I can't really feel like I'm embodying Christ or being Christ to my children if I'm talking negative about my husband. Sure. Right. So the Lord revealed that to me. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, your heart's hard. Mm. Gosh, how, how, can I, how can my heart be softened? Forgiveness, mm -hmm. right? Forgiveness. That's the only way for so that, that heart. That's the yeah. first to step in, in breaking the wall down and yes. building the bridge? Forgiveness. Yeah, forgiveness. And you can't do it on your own, can can't, you? No. Because no. God no. has already built the bridge. You've He's, got to walk His way. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And let yeah. Him. Well, He's free you. Yeah. I'm free. Yeah. I'm yeah. already free. Yep. And, and Michael's already free, yep. right? As, as long as we just accept that forgiveness. Because really, yep. I can't do it. I have to accept the forgiveness to give to Michael, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the first thing that happened in ours, if I'm yeah, right, it, too. It, yeah, I mean, that's a, another whole other story kind of thing. But but it, it really is. And I, I remember, um, for me, because I could spew a, a good... Uh, serve a good cup of bitterness well, and let me just interject this right here <laughs> He's for, not gonna for let michael, share the michael first i'm I'm, sp I'm speaking for us when, when our wives are mad at us when 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 they when they have wait a minute when it's when Maybe here to here and it's in their heart you can tell they're mad at us they they can tell probably you, you can tell probably. you just can also snitch. tell just you snitch. can also tell though when when you have forgiven us ah. and see it's oh, the wow. love of God. It's the oh, love. The chance. Bible says it's the love of God that draws us. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Yeah. So is 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 mm. she? Is she gave me offered me forgiveness when I didn't deserve it? That touched my life. Mm. Yes. That had a big impact yes. on our marriage. So go ahead. I, I'm kind of speechless yeah. right now. Okay. <laughs> I'll just say. I'll just say there was, you know, the, it, to, to back it up one place further, so so that you're not having to constantly work on that forgiveness because that's hard work. I'll yeah. make it for but is to <laughs> is to capture the thought. Yes. To capture it right, and and we're we're given hope in Scripture. It says, capture these thoughts and give them to Christ, because He will yeah. give us His thoughts, which are higher than the heavens. So they're above our emotions. Yeah, they're above this <laughs> earthly dwelling. So when we capture that thought, when we catch it, when it's first put in there, like, That's oh, right. is He showing up right? Yeah. Uh -huh. As soon as that thought comes in, we can capture it and give it. Just slide it right over to the table, yes. give it to the Lord, and yeah. say, it's yours. Yeah, it's yours because this is your issue you can deal well, with it. i can't 
I've shared many, many times that um, when I was getting to a, a huge breaking point, because my, my prayers were very, well, one of his favorite sayings were, well, if you don't expect anything out of me, I won't I'll let, let you, you down. down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I've heard that too. Well, you <laughs> have expectations. Do you know what that was really that was saying BC, to me? before Christ. <laughs> <Yeah. BC. laughs> what that was really saying is, you know, don't talk to me about anything. I don't want to, you know, just if, if you don't, if you right. don't rock the boat, right. yeah. the boat's going to sl- float fine, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. But the truth is, is that I did have expectations. And we, as we go into a marriage, I, I, I'm looking at uh, one of our regular viewers, Faith, she she made a comment, you know, and her and her husband are just new, starting out. They just got married back in, in July. They're oh, newlyweds. And, but she says that when they got married, it, it helped them to be united and, and align their faith with Jesus. And and I get that, and I, and I see that. Um, but it says, also, our calling is aligned now, and we know together our wildest dreams for being a light for Christ is going to, to come true. In other words, they've got expectations. She's saying, mm-hmm. this is what I'm expecting. And if something comes in and dashes that dream mm-hmm. or, you know, knocks that, that, that hope that you had down, it's very exhausting. And so I was at that point of exhaustion, and but my prayers are always change him, change him, you know, mm-hmm. he's right. this, he's that, right. you know, I get him right. yeah. you know, whatever. And I'll never forget the day that I just dropped to my knees and there was a lot of stuff that was happening simultaneously, but the, 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 the bottom squishing it down, juicing it down thing that happened is I dropped to my knees and I said, I said a simple prayer because, you know, I have to put a little plug in for prayer. God's not interested in our big, long and fancy. I mean, he just wants to see our heart. And my heart yeah. was just and I said, Lord, give me, I said, give my husband a new wife and, and let it be me. Mm-hmm. Because wow, wow. I, I yeah. was just so, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and it, uh, and it, it drove it, me away. It just built sure. the wall. The wall got higher and higher. He was sick of me. I was sick of me. I was sick of him. I mean, the whole thing, you know. Right. And really, that was a real turning point. And of course, if you know, you've heard our story about um, uh, fasting and prayer and all of these things started coming together. And it really, like I said, it adjusted the picture that Walking I had. Walking on Jesus Bridge. My expectations were were no longer mm. at all from him. Praise My the Lord. expectations were, were from the Christ. promises in Christ. When he mm-hmm. said he is able, mm-hmm. he is able. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. No question. Right. right. So right. it is a game changer. You committed. Me. You committed. You committed. I committed. And you took well, all those you took God for his promises. You said, yep. Here, this is yours. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is yours. And it is so important. Even if you fall on your knees and say a little prayer, or if you just have to just spill it oh, yeah. all, <laughs> exactly. you know, it's worth it. It, it. It's worth it, and it changed everything. And, and yes, although my expectation was that my marriage is going to get better, but this is what I had to know. No matter what happened, I needed to, I had to have my heart right. We could never be what God wanted us to be this way if I wasn't letting Him nurture and change Absolutely. me and make me Beautiful. whole too. So. And because of that, because that she chose to do and rely completely on God and let him fight the battle. Let him the fight the battle. The battle to is the Lord's. Right. And Praise once she Lord. realized that and she allowed God to start fighting the battle in our marriage, mm-hmm. something happened in my life that's never happened before in my life then, and I'm here today. Amen. So Amen. praise God. Amen. Yeah. So um, what do we? What I think we're probably getting close to where we need to to uh, probably fifteen minutes out. So I'll tell you what, why don't we? Why don't we? I know that Joy, that you come with some thoughts about covenant, mm-hmm. and, and I think you need to go a little bit deeper into that. And uh, and Cindy, if you have any uh, thoughts that you'd like to share, okay. and then I've got something I might wrap up with also. Yeah, so. I, I what I love is this <laughs> quarter in um, our Sabbath school quarterly, we are studying the covenant. Yeah. And what is that covenant? And covenant is a promise, right? It's that promise of a commitment with God. And like I said, in the Old Testament, it talks about it um, 287 times. But what I liked about the story of Abraham was that it was linked directly to the New Testament and us today. So it's it's that relationship still for us today. But if we go to um, Genesis chapter 12, and this is that story with Abraham, and we're looking at um, verses 1 through 3. And every time you look up the word 
I, I, I love to do word studies. And every time you look at the word <laughs> covenant in the Old Testament, you are going to see another mm. expectation <clears throat> that you can have of the relationship with God. Amen. Yeah. If you want to know, what does that relationship look like? Yeah. Because there's benefits to a relationship with God. Amen. Why go into the relationship unless unless you know that it's going to be beneficial? Exactly. Mm -hmm. This relationship with God mm -hmm. is so like beneficial that. that 287 times in the Old wow. Testament, you can look up like what, what, what are... <laughs> You that just my won, time. You just won the covenant. <laughs> it's, it's time to read the verse. <laughs> now the Lord had said to Abram, "Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, Amen. and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed." And so when we look at this, he called he called Abraham or Abram. This was before mm -hmm. his name change. Mm -hmm. He called him to action, to a commitment, yeah. right? A commitment with me that you trust me, that yeah. you're going to leave your family and your home, and you're yeah. going to follow me, yeah. right? So he so the relationship with God is going to call for a commitment. It's mm -hmm. the same with the marriage. Yeah. we're called to commit, and there there are things that you really have. You could just take some time and really delve into mm. the commitment that actual written commitment that that yes. uh, saying yes i'm going to marry this person and that's it this is it this is that mm -hmm. covenant there are benefits that come with that that you cannot get from just living with another person mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's completely it's different and here you can see that god said that when you commit to that mm -hmm. i'm going to bless you the mm -hmm. individual mm -hmm. i'm going to make you a great nation yes and I will bless those who bless you. So mm -hmm. whenever I'm out walking about and I'm doing whatever I'm doing, mm -hmm. those people who I'm a blessing to and who are a blessing to me will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Praise Absolutely. God. Right? And I can also say that if someone's cursing me, I don't have to worry about it. It's none of my business. It's none That's of my, none, yeah. None, yeah. None, yeah. none of my business because he is going to take care of that. That's yes. Right. He's going to take care of that. Yep. So what assurance that is. I don't have to worry about those people yep. who, I don't have to look over my shoulder. I don't have to try to figure out what they're doing. Mm -hmm. God's got that. Amen. He's and got then, you back. Then the last blessing here it says, "In in all and in and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Wow. All the families. What what a promise! It's just saying that from you, all these blessings will be given. And then we, yeah. we go on to see that he is he is known for in the New Testament it tells us that he is. Um, he is blessed because of his faith, mm -hmm. and that that faith is is it has been is is the same faith that we have in Christ, right? Yeah. And because yes. we have that faith mm -hmm. in Christ, we have these blessings. We can count these blessings. Amen. We can have the expectation, Amen. absolutely. And they're not from my husband, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Put yeah. the expectations no. in the right place. That's right. Amen. No. And we, we have talked a lot about focusing on our problems versus focusing on Jesus, mm -hmm. and and we we really do. I mean. When we focus on the issues, the problem, yep. they get bigger, they get bigger. And like I said, yep. if you vocalize the them, if you go higher. talk to your girlfriends about yep. it or you call your mama and talk to her about it, yes. it morphs, you know, yep. into the point you almost have convinced yourself that mm. this is no just, hope. there's no hope. Yep. Mm. So we need to, we need to be really cautious and wise. I mean, I believe yep. we've been given a lot of counsel about that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, I, I know that sometimes, especially when, when, when I was first understanding what relationship with Michael was it's being wise about who I'm taking those things to yes if I'm going to take them to somebody who's just going to jump on the bandwagon with me, right? That might feel good for a minute. It'll feel good for a minute. But I won't be accomplishing the goal. No. And accomplishing that goal, you know, Christ gives us wisely counsel. He tells us, come to me. Come to mm -hmm. me, you are heavy laden. Come to me when Absolutely. you're confused. Come to me when you're hurting. And I'm going to take it all and I'm going to change it for you. Mm -hmm. And And sometimes I don't even know what that looks like or I'm just so stuck in my brain that I need to go find another woman who yes. I can trust to Absolutely. take me to the There's foot of Jesus. In that, yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. I don't want it. Like, hearing her words are great because I know you, you, you would understand. Absolutely. But I want yeah. you to grab my hand that's right. And take me to my yeah. knees. Yes. And bring me to the word. Because that's what we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, before I, I want to just remind you, if you do have prayer requests, um, yeah. if you can text them to 870 510 
8048 and we would love to have prayer for you so yeah. if you have that um i can't help but close this i mean we can't talk about marriages and and nurturing and all that without um going to first corinthians 13 chapter mm -hmm. 4 and 5 and we know mm -hmm. what that is probably yep. by heart but love is patient love is kind Mm -hmm. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. And I think that one is so important because mm -hmm. I think it's probably the number one on the, uh, on, the, on the poll when people are going, you know, and they're going through challenges. I will inevitably hear someone wanting to but you remember what you did to me, you know, or you remember what you yeah. said to me. Those mm -hmm. are heartful things, you know. I don't, I don't know why whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That could not be more further from mm -hmm. the truth because words do hurt and they're, they're very hard. But we have to make, there's another commitment level that comes in here and we have to say, you know what, that is the past. Mm -hmm. That I don't want to be a part of that anymore. We have yeah. to make that commitment. And it, it makes a huge difference. We're not tallying. We're not putting, you know, mm -hmm. marks on, mm -hmm. you know, on the wall there. Because every time we do that, we're really just, we're, we're, we're putting, we're not, we're not building yeah. bridges there. We're, 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 bridges. We're, 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 we're making a. When you're first, when you're first married or when you maybe don't have Christ as your center yet and you start re look, reading these words, love suffers long. Wow. <laughs> I mean, is, is that really possible? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you start, is that really possible? It does not behave rudely. I mean, ever, mm -hmm. you know, th these things seem like they're impossible, but as I see Christ working, mm -hmm. as we behold Christ, as we make him the center and we recognize what he has actually done and given for each one of us, mm -hmm. how much he was willing to do for our relationship. Right. He was he willing to go the our, distance. Yeah, he he was willing to do everything for our relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just endure all the physical pain, but death as well. The thing is, I'm is that because that. he resurrected, because we know that, these things are fulfilled. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to see him starting to transform our relationship more and more each day mm -hmm. it's a testimony it's a testimony that love doesn't envy no like i don't my love for him doesn't have to be no. worried about this or that yeah. exactly i know i know what christ has in store for us mm -hmm. and it's so worth it it's not mm -hmm. it's not willing to pass away you know no well this is this is all hands-on uh, every bit of this, and um, I guess when I we hear need to give it, you some wrap-up well, thoughts. You know what? Huh? I've been liking this. I told him I really think that I've, I've been kind of quiet tonight, but um, but I've been listening. So I'm 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 batting for the people out there right now. My heart is heavy mm -hmm. for the people out there because I was once in a marriage that was struggling, that that there was no hope, that the wall was so high I could not see over it, and I thought that we might as well give up. Mm -hmm. What would you tell that person out there right now? What mm -hmm. would you tell them? And I, I think I've heard what you, what you're sharing here. Yeah. Give up, give up on trying to straighten them up, and let Jesus no. let Jesus straighten you up. And yes. by doing that, then that's going to change. That's going to be a game changer in your marriage. But what would you what would you say? I I would say that if you're not already doing this, I would seriously enter into a very um, dedicated time of prayer and even consider fasting mm -hmm. um and just keep that my, my favorite scripture ephesians three twenty. keep that ever before you write it hear yourself say it see yourself write it but god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think yeah. because we just think well pff, our marriage is done you know and we don't have time to belabor a lot of different things within that scope but we're mm -hmm. talking about you know the person who's just given up and goes, this isn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. I can't even tell you. I mean, I fell in love with you on our first blind date. And I thought, whoa. But you know what? That got tarnished, didn't it? Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> yeah, he said it. <laughs> but you know what God you know what God loves to do? He loves to restore. That's right. He loves to repair. Yeah. Yes. And he's he a God of impossibilities. He, yes, he is yes. the God of impossibilities. And he can restore what the locust has stolen. Yeah. I love him more 
than I could even imagine that first night. Mm -hmm. he, he truly has, he made me a promise and he says, I'm gonna make you the best husband you've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he told me that, I thought, yeah, right, you know, but he did. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do it in his own, he only was able to do it and fulfill it through Christ. So I would yeah. say don't give up and, and just commit some time to prayer and claiming God's promises over your situation. Okay. And, and as it, do it, try it, don't give up, and in six months from now, you'll have a different outlook. You have so. a testimony, mm -hmm. Joy. I would say, I would say yes, everything that Cynthia said for sure. But I would also add, if you can, right now with a really good friend of mine, we're reading scripture every morning, every night. We're reading mm -hmm. Bible verses, and we're talking about the love of Christ and mm -hmm. what that actually what that relationship really is mm. and i can see her heart just starting to feel more mm. secure in what her future is yeah. with christ yes she my text this morning was my heart is with christ mm. my mind is with christ yes. i'm walking with christ and praise it god. just yes praise god to see her being freed up from all of everything that has happened in that wow. relationship. So find a friend, somebody who's willing to dig into scripture with you yes. because your friends can't fix it. The only one that can fix it is Christ. Okay. Whether you yes. stay author, together or whether, faith, yeah. or whether you're not, whatever the end looks like, go to Christ. Find Amen. a friend who's willing Amen. to take you there. There it is, friends. This has been an exciting Bible study. This is my take on it all. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this was marriage. The I do is God's idea. That's right. This is his plan. And any time God starts something, he will finish it. Here's That's the right. big problem, I think. I think people start a marriage, you know, like with, with the love that God gives them, but then they start trying to do it on their own strength apart from God. Yeah. Right? Yes. So the, the, big, the big take home is that let go and let God. Mm -hmm. Work out your marriage. Amen. Let go. He will do that. This, uh, and trust uh, Him for a miracle. And trust Him and expect a miracle. Yes. I'm even exactly. going to say expect a miracle. It's, it's, it's Jesus that will give you uh, forgiveness. It's Jesus Amen. that will give you long suffering. It's Jesus. It's mm -hmm. as you cling to Jesus. And don't wait on your spouse to do it. You yep. start first. Yeah. I know in my life, what happened in my life is when Cindy started first, I seen Jesus in her and I'd never seen it before in anyone. And that made me hunger and thirst for what mm. she had. And so it's all about oh, Jesus. God. It really mm -hmm. is. And mm. this same Jesus is waiting right now on us to come to him mm -hmm. in prayer. In our final moments that we got, mm. we can send up prayers. I've got uh, some prayer concerns right here in front of me. Bridget Kearns, we love Bridget. Mm. Bridget is fighting for, with cancer right now. And we're just asking God for a miracle, but we know God can do that. He's already worked a miracle in her mm -hmm. life. She's completely right with Jesus. Amen. But she's Amen. more concerned That's about all beautiful. those people that she has influence on. And so we're lifting up Billy, um, uh, Bridget Kearns, and then Billy Miller family uh, lost their uh, mom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we praise, uh, praise Shirley Marino. Uh, she had surgery today and everything went good. Shirley's mm -hmm. one of our regulars yeah. here at church on, on Facebook Live and we love you, Shirley and Jim. So any other prayer concerns? I think we need to pray for the marriages. Yes, out there. I would say the marriage. So I've got I've got two 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 ladies here that has been there and done it. And so Joy will ask you to lift up prayer and Cindy, you lift up prayer. And I think that might be that probably is all the time that we've got left. Just these yep. two prayers right here, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for an opportunity to come to you again this evening and to talk about what this covenant, what this relationship, what this marriage looks like. And you have given us an earthly relationship that is an opportunity to reflect just a smidge of the, the goodness and the grace that you want to extend in a relationship with each one of us. Father, may today any of those hearts that are hurting, may they mm -hmm. come before you knowing and expecting that you will bridge the gap, that mm -hmm. you already have bridged the gap, that you love them unconditionally and you, you have, there is hope. There is hope, Father, and may they hold on to you. Father, I pray for our prayer, the people we've listed on our prayer list, and I ask that you send your Holy Spirit to be with each one of them, that they might see your mighty hand in their lives. Mm -hmm. Father, remove the blinders from all of our eyes, from those who are listening and those relationships. Father, remove their eye, those blinders so that they might see your mighty hand and your grace and your mercy. Father, we love you. We trust you. May we hear you more clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Father, I just... 
echo and come along beside my sister Joy and my husband, and we just want to lift up. I think of all the people I see join in each week that are listening. I see them tonight. I see their testimonies and their praises, and I ask that you will just continue to strengthen us all for the days ahead, that those marriages that are brand new, all the way to those that have been together for even 70 years, Lord, I ask mm -hmm. that you continue to reveal your plan through these marriages, that we would lift up your your banner high and just show everyone um, what blessings can come from committing to this covenant. So Father, tonight we, we thank you in advance for what you are going to do, the miracles that we are going to see burst forth as people take you at, at your word and trust Amen. you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us tonight. I told you it was going to be an exciting Bible study. <laughs> Let Jesus build the bridge in your marriage. Good night. Love you. Yes, God bless. Bye-bye.